Yes, that did it. How's everybody doing today? This is Michael G. Davis, CEO, broker, Brooks and Davis Real Estate Firm, welcoming you to another installment of the Create Your New Real Estate, Create Your New Life Real Estate Training and uh, Business our business meeting and coaching. So, welcome everybody to 2019. Uh, uh, how to handle tough times, shifting markets. Uh, for those that are seeing us for the first time, maybe you're checking us out on our YouTube channel. Um, this right here is our opportunity to come together as a company, and we talk business at the front. But on the back end, we, we deal with some level of training. So if there's something that you heard today that sparked your interest, um, you know, our secret sauce has to do with one-on-one -on -one real estate and business coaching about uh, putting our agent members in position to be successful. If that's something that falls in line of where you want to be, um, then it's real, real easy. Uh, you can actually dial this number behind me. Um, or, you know, what I decided to do today is, is show you all um, where to go to get, where to go to schedule an appointment. So it's real simple. Um, if you like something that you hear today, uh, all you got to do is go to this link that I'm typing, bit.ly, B-D-R-E-F, appointment. Look, it already put that up there for us. And boom, it's going to take you here. And you can schedule an in-person or an online company introduction. So if there's anything that you hear today that you, that you can appreciate, I highly encourage you, go to that website, bit.ly backslash BDREF appointment, all lowercase, and it's going to take you to our appointment screen. Uh, I'll probably be showing that again towards the end of our session today. Now, uh, we have a couple of people that's on, on board with us today, so you, you all know at any point you can stop and engage me, ask questions. Training business meeting is not just meant for me to be talking. Um, that's what a magic happens, so you guys know that. Also, we offer CE credit. Uh, so, again, if you haven't um, been a part of our meetings, um, then I always start off with showing people just how easy it is for our agents to get their continuing education elective credits. So four steps. Student must be logged in at the time the session begins. I check out identification and make sure you are who you say you are. Uh, I have to be able to see your face and you must stay on the entire hour. You do that and you ain't got to worry about select uh, elective CE credit for when it's time to renew that bad boy. Um, so Let's go ahead and jump in. So today's title is how to make sure your leads don't dry up during, uh, during tough times. Well, what we're going to be talking about today is, and then it's a lot, this is covering about 86 pages of the book, right? We're dealing with shift. And we're going to cover about 86 pages of the book today, a couple of sessions. So, uh, and we're really going to be talking about uh, the importance of consistently lead generate. So we're really going to uh, dive into that. Uh, we're also really going to dive into lead conversion, which are the two probably most important areas when you're operating, in my opinion, in or out of a shift. But since we're talking about market shifting and the challenges that come with it, so it's absolutely important to that. Now we're going to spend about uh, there's a lot of content, a lot of content that I'm gonna try to squeeze in today. So I may move along pretty quick, um, but remember, and I'm gonna show you this later. There's a way for you to access the notes that has everything uh, that I've taken out that I've gleaned from uh, this time in the book. All right, so uh, our moment of core, we're gonna be dealing with our core purpose today. Um, you know, as an organization, our goal, our purpose is to create a greater experience for every stakeholder of the real estate community. So as the CEO, it's my responsibility to continually cast vision out there that you all understand that the imprint uh, that we want that we want to leave not only in our clients' hearts, 
We also want to leave it in the customers that we run across, in the um, colleagues that we work with, whether they're in title, whether they're in uh, loans, whether they're inspectors, whoever is a part of this real estate transaction, we want to make their lives better by being a party to the transaction. And that's what our purpose is all about when it comes to Brooks and Davis Real Estate Firm. Remember, a moment in core has to do with our core ideology, which is made up of our purpose, which is this, uh, our Harry Audacious goal, which is what we talked about last week in episode 117, and our five values. So that's what we're all about here at Brooks and Davis Real Estate Firm. And I feel really good about, you know, where we're going as an, as an organization and, and being able to fulfill um, that, that purpose, all right? So now we're going to jump into, you know, we look at how we performed over the week or, or since the last time we've had a session. So we're going to jump into that area of it. I definitely want to congratulate some individuals for uh, bringing in new production this year. I mean, I'm sorry, this week. Um, so we have Margaret. Congratulations, Margaret. Uh, bringing on a couple of uh, new transactions, uh, so good job. And uh, Laquana Davis um, brought in two new contracts as well. You know, going into the holidays, going into the winter months, like we're going to be talking about today. Um, man, being able to get a buyer, being able to get a seller under contract as the market is slowed down because people are more focused on holiday stuff is golden. You work as hard as you can for nine months uh, because who knows what's going to happen uh, between the months of October, November, and December. But, you know, Margaret and Laquana, they out there getting it, um, which is a testament to, should be a testament to everybody. And what it was, a, it's a testament of if they can do it, you can do it. Everybody has the capability, right? And as you can see, what's really a telltale sign of us moving or, or the market slowing as we're closing the year out is I, I don't even have top five this week. I only have top three, <laughs> right? Because everybody's closed on their contracts and they haven't replaced them. They haven't brought in new contracts. So, uh, man, I'm, I'm only looking at the top three agents today because I only have three agents that have contracts. But guess what? You know, you're talking about $2 million worth of production. So, uh, you know, that $2 million is split three ways. So what does that mean? Bigger commission check. So let's get you on the board. It's not over. Don't give up, people. Don't give up. Um, you know, now is the time to see what you made up. Made up, you know, as the CEO, as as your broker, as your coach. Um, seeing this just um, lets me know the things that I need to be working on with you all as my agents to help y'all get to the point. So you know, if we if, when you're here or when we're here next year, then it'll be a fight of who the top five are because we're going to be giving concepts, we're going to be giving insights that people can capitalize on, not just having a top three uh, when it comes to next year. All right, so um, real quick, we're going to do listing showcase. And like I said, there's a lot of information that I want to get in today. So I'm not going to spend a bunch of time on some of the other things that we deal with. Um, our listing showcase for today comes from our agent, Jeff Lewis. Uh, he has a, a beautiful uh, What's going on? All right. Um, as a property in Fresno, uh, on... Hey, what is, you just, uh, what no, I'm, I'm up. Yes, it's on. Oh, there we go. On um, Hannah Falls, 1014 Hannah Falls. Um, it oh, is God, a 160 square foot property built in 2009. Uh, if you're feeling familiar with Andover Farms, that's an area, it's in the city market area, but that's an area that's going down uh, 288. Uh, well, well, how Almeda, um, that's where Fresno, Fresno is. You can see the schools that it's zoned to, Lake Olympia. So it's really in the Missouri City area, the high tower. Um, you know, pretty solid schools, all of this Fort Bend. Um, it is a four bedroom, half bath, um, great opportunity. Um, you can see the, the front of it. 
to see the inside of it. Um, I think, it, you know, with the arches, um, it's staged fairly well. Um, that's with the, with the individuals living in there. Um, you can see that space, so it's plenty of space in the kitchen, plenty of cabinet space. Uh, good, for, great for entertaining, as we can see that through. I mean, through the pictures, again, 2,500 square feet. Uh, so you have a number of uh, areas to congregate in. Oh, um, story home. Gives you an idea of what the bedrooms look like. Um, there's, assuming that's a game room, media media area, or uh, study, the bedroom. So it's a you know it's a quaint property. He's only asking 224. Uh, looks like they just recently did a price for So, you know, to, to be zoned to those schools, High Tower, um, Lake Olympia, um, I mean, it's a it's, it's a really Ooh. nice home. It has a, it's like a fairly large okay. uh, covered patio. So if uh, you have the kind of buyer or client that loves to entertain, uh, this probably would be ideal uh, based on the size of it on the inside, as well as... Um, the, the huge covered patio on the back end looks like it has two ceiling fans to it as well. Uh, the vicinity of the property, um, being close to, you know, the Fort Bend Tollway, Highway 6, being close to Almeda, those are main th major thoroughfares. So when it comes to location, I mean, it's an ideal location for individuals that don't necessarily want to be in the city or may not can afford to have this size home the city with this size yard. I mean, the lot uh, looks like the lot is about, uh, let's see, don't, it don't tell me. All right, so it doesn't tell me the lot. Um, but the property is 1014 Hannah Falls. Again, he's asking $224,999. let us get together and help Jeff get that property sold. All right, um, I am so excited to be saying what I'm about to say right now, right? Uh, Jess knows why I'm so excited. And now you're finna, you're finna know why I'm so excited because what is returned is our success in real estate machine. Uh, we had it had disappeared. Um, my heart dropped. Jess' hearts dropped. We, had, uh, we tried to log in. We tried to go to it one day, and it was no longer there. Oh, where was it? Uh, so eight months, almost a year worth of work down the train. So uh, we immediately had to figure out uh, what our next move was. And uh, I believe the rebirth uh, definitely wants to give a, a humongous shout out to Jessica Joseph for taking the initiative to get, to get this thing back alive for us. Um, and I believe that this, this, this iteration of the serum is a lot better, a lot user friendly than what we had before. So uh, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be issuing out in people accounts, uh, and we're going to be issuing those out uh, to get everybody's login information so you all can get access to it. Uh, let's follow the, the theme. The theme that we had in the previous success in uh, real estate machine. It does follow the same uh, trajectory. Uh, but it's more in a, a course format. Um, all I'm going to do for you today, this is kind of the back office, but what I'm going to do for you today is review the course. So this is the course. Uh, like I said, everybody's going to get an, a, an account login to be able to um, get in the course, um, but I'm just going to preview it real quick so you can so we can show it to you. Next week, we're going to work on getting everybody there. Um, so let's see, go to preview course. Boom. So like I said, it's more than a website. At this point, it's a course. Now you can have a uh, an actual agenda to show you how to flow through it. All right? So if you, if you look on the left side, it gives you pretty much your syllabus. Right? And at any point, and you can go to any area of, just like with the previous one, it was links. With this one, it is more courses. Um, so, and just while I'm going through this thing, if you see it's anything that I that I jump over, then you unmute yourself and you chime in there for me. So, like here, if you just want to keep everything succinct, then it's broke down with the introduction. Start here. So that's like your blue, your blue. Um, 
Here we go. So we remember this, right? And so it's like your foundational, your foundational items from your success funnel. Um, that's your introduction, right? And then inside of the, um, so here we go. And then inside of the introduction, there are 11 areas that you want to take a look at. So, and then it drops down to those 11 areas. And those areas consist of videos, um, and they also consist of documents, right? And then, so it's a, it's a similar thing for all the different skill sets that we had set up. So generating leads, you hit the drop down arrow, and it takes you to all the areas that you can go to. So, and then you can look at these little signs like multimedia, that's telling you that's a video. Text, that's telling you that's a, 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 a multiple videos, actually. Um, and then download, it tells you the additional resources and things that you can download. Notice how wherever you go, so like say if I go to this video, skill set number one, you're always reminded what this content is connected to. So again, it makes it easier for you to uh, stay on top of it. All right. Um, let's see. So again, we have it broke down. All the, all of the skill sets. All of them have the particular areas. Uh, remember, on the last one, you click on skill set number three, and it had it broke down between buyers, sellers, tenants, and apartments. Well, guess what? We still had a capability, uh, but again, it's a course now. So inside of the course, there's an area type of lead for buyers you click on, and then there goes that buyers page that we had in the previous create your new, I mean, a uh, success in RE machine. And then the same thing for, again, apartments. There's that apartment page that spoke to specifically apartments. So I'm ecstatic that we got it back. Uh, like I said, I'm not going to go into too much detail with it. We're going to be getting out everybody's uh, login information. We're going to be working on that to get, get that out to everybody for next week. Um, I probably am going to double back and maybe spend some time. I'm not going to do it today because, like I said, there's a lot of content that I'm trying to squeeze in today. Uh, but I probably am going to double back so I can do a uh, more thorough go-through. of. Uh, and, again, we want people to feel comfortable with doing it. Or we just may do a video uh, kind of walking through an instructional video uh, to show the bells and whistles uh, that we have. Matter of fact, that's probably in what I'm going to do. All right. Now, with that being said, we don't have any upcoming events or opportunities. Uh, shout out to everybody that attended the takeovers that we had for the last couple of weeks. Uh, we did our takeover at Lupe Tortilla uh, two Fridays ago. And then last Saturday, we took over um, uh, the 2020 Vision Board Party. So, uh, we're, again, that's something... Uh, probably be looking for our next takeover to be next week or the following week, uh, but we're not going to go too far without us spending time, no more than a couple of weeks without us coming together and just hanging out and relaxing together as a family. All right, so now before I begin, I want to uh, show you all my, I have notes, right? And I want you all to be able to access those notes. All right, so as you, I'm showing you my desktop so you can see that there's a screen that I'm actually working from. Um, and inside of it, and I, I do this, every time I do a Create Your New Life, I create one of these agendas for the episode. So this is episode 118. And you all have access to it. I think it's imperative that you know how to access these because, as you can see, um, I'm putting in the things or my talking points as I'm going through the book. Uh, I even have little visuals of the slides that we may talk about, um, but you can see some stuff bolded. That means the things that are not bolded, I don't talk about those. So there's more information on these agendas than there are on um, that are actually on the video. So I want to show you real quick on how to access this just in case you forgot. Now they are in your seven dot training folder, so. You know, all Brooks and Davis agent members have access to the seven dot training folder. Uh, if you have a hard time accessing it, uh, reach out to us and we can make sure you get connected. So inside of the seven dot agent training folder, uh, what you have to do is look for create your new life. So there's create your new life. Right. And uh, well, this is this is the hard way to do it. The easy way to do it would just be do EP 118. And then it's going to pull it up for you. That's the easiest way to do it, right? The hard way 
is, is that you would actually have to go to create your new life. And then this particular create your new life, all of our 2019 create your new lives are in this reboot for 2019. So you click on that and then you have to look for the date series. So it's November 12th. So this one is actually between October 28th and December 3rd. Shift series one through five. You click on that and then you'll get a folder. 118, 117, 116. So this is 118 and inside of that folder, you're going to get um, the notes, which is this file right here, and the presentation, which is that file. So like I said, the easiest thing to do is remember the title, EP, and then it's, it's going to give it to you, episode 118. So like if I was looking for 117, boom. If I was looking for 116, boom. So that's the easiest way to do it is to probably search in that way or uh, follow the steps that I just showed you on how to be able to access um, the show notes. All right, so with that being said, let's go ahead and jump in. Uh, so we're going to spend about 40 minutes just walking through as much as we can on um, dealing with um, finding motivated leads. So the, uh, this particular session is we're going to start off with uh, Tactics 4. Tactic four and tactic five are the ones that uh, we may try. We may get into a little bit of tactic five, but mainly it's tactic four. And tactic four is find the motivated, uh, which is lead generation. Find the motivated. Like I said, we're covering about 86 pages. Uh, so the first thing that uh, Gary talks about in the book is, is that being able to, you really got to be able to see this thing coming. I was in a shift 2007, didn't see it coming, didn't realize that the market had shifted until 2009, and you can imagine what that time was when it came to my real estate career. So one of the biggest things that are important is you being able to understand what a shifting market when you're leading up to a shifting market, right? So a shifting market is when you're starting to see fewer leads, fewer showings, increased days on market for your listing. Those are the signs that when they show up, you need to start taking notice because those are the early warning signals of what is most likely coming next, which is more inventory and fewer pending properties. So now, if you've got fewer leads, fewer listings, uh, I mean, fewer leads, fewer showings, increased days on market, now you've got more listings, all right, you're going to get to a position to where you have more properties for sale than you have buyers actually in the market. And at that point, it becomes a buyer's market. Things have shifted. Now, uh, it says uh, demand slows down, supply builds up, and as leads become fewer, you must recognize the situation and make a more concerted effort to generate leads. A more concerted effort, right? I've been in real estate 15 years. I've been a broker for 13 of those years. And, the, you know, the biggest issue is the level of lead generation that agents feel like they need to be doing. Um, they feel like they're doing more than enough when in reality they're not even close to doing the amount that need that needs to be done. So now when you get into a shifted market, it becomes even more detrimental. Now, um, it says the cause and challenges of a shift of a shift is motivation. As you're going through a, mo a shift, people become less motivated to do things. The buyers become less motivated to buy. The sellers become less motivated to sell. Uh, and what that looks like from a practical standpoint is, is that as a buyer, you start seeing them be more comfortable with just walking away from deals and losing their earnest money, leaving their earnest money on the table. Right? And as a seller, when you work with a seller, you start seeing them get more comfortable with not offering concessions, not, you know, decreasing their price, not, um, you know, just saying, you know what, well, forget it. We'll try again next year. You'll start seeing that. Right now for the buyer and the seller, you know, that's their decision. But for the realtor, that's not time that you can get back. And time is more valuable than money. You know how to say time is money. No, time is more than money. Right. You can get money back, but you can't get time back. So you got to become more skilled in not just being a good real estate agent, but you got to become more skilled in being a salesperson and being able to inspire and encourage people to move towards the goals that they've set forth. All right. Now, uh, one of the things that Gary says is that you can motivate 
someone to help them better understand why they should consider buying or selling, but you cannot motivate them, right? And I think that's another one of those areas that we get twisted. Is, is that we're out there, we feel like we gotta, we gotta motivate, we gotta convince people that they, they need to buy a house. You know, you got this buyer out here and they're just dragging their feet, they're not making a decision and you feel like it's your job to motivate them, right? Or there's a seller, he's not willing to make the, the necessary adjustments that need to be made or the necessary concessions that need to be made to get the house sold. Um, so you feel like you need to influence them, you need to uh, convince them, right? Well, that's not our job. We're not here to convince people to do things, right? We're not here to motivate them. We're here to give them the information, give them our expertise, and then encourage them, help them better understand why it's the best move for them, right? But we can't motivate them. And since you can't motivate people, your only choice, especially during a shift, would be to find more motivated people. That's why it's imperative that you ramp up your lead generation. Because what you're looking to do is, again, not calling people to try to convince them to buy a house now. You're looking for people that are already motivated to do it. You're not trying to convince sellers why now is the time for them to sell. You're just looking for the people that are already there. And then you want to make sure that you're the first person that they meet with or the second person that they meet with because your chances are greatly increased when you're the first or second agent that they meet with. All right, so now to do this effectively, to be in a, to really take a lead generation seriously, you gotta move past your myths. So that's the section of, the, of that uh, tactic four where he talks about moving past your myths. Now, most agents believe once they get their real estate license that they've, be, they've gotten to the business of a, Real, of a realtor, of a real estate agent, when in reality, um, you know, they've gotten to the business of helping people with their real estate needs, when in reality, you got into two businesses. Yes, you did get into that business, right? When you, when you put on the R, that's what you're saying that you're going to do. You're going to help people um, with their real estate needs, um, but you also got into the business of lead generation, lead generating business, right? You're in that business too. And they're inseparable, right? You can't do one without the other. You can't help people with their real estate needs if you don't have anybody to help with their real estate needs. So that's why you have to do both. You have to do lead generation and become an expert at it. Now, from a distance, uh, one of the things that Gary talks about, and he talks about his own experience, and when I say Gary, I'm talking about Gary Keller, which is the author of the book. He says that from a distance, he thought lead generation was really difficult. But after diligently applying himself for a reasonable length of time, he came to see it was actually quite easy and could even be fun. So, and I think it's the same trajectory that we go through as well when it comes to lead generation. We, we initially see it as difficult, and that's why we don't want to do it. Um, but you've got to get, you got to move past that. Uh, he says he also thought uh, he was going to be too busy and wouldn't have time to lead generate. Um, but he says as he focused on doing it every day, he discovered it wasn't an issue of having time, but an issue of making time and then protecting the time. So uh, that's another one of those things as I was coaching agents, as I've, I've worked with agents in the past, uh, the biggest issue when I ask them, hey, did you do your numbers? Did you lead generate? Did you spend time in lead generation? Uh, and they say they always come up with a reason on why they didn't do it, and a lot of it had to do with they were busy, too busy to lead generate. Um, he also talks about uh, intimidation, says that once he realized that time wasn't an issue, uh, he believed that he couldn't lead generate because he didn't know what to do or say and was afraid of making mistakes. Um, but he talks about how he constantly got over, he, as he consistently got over that, right? So that's the psychology of it. You know, that's one thing that I talk about a lot. 80% of success in this business has to do with psychology, the psychology of something just like that, believing that you can do something. And then because of it, not want to make mistakes, it freezes you so you don't move. This is the psychology of it. But he said he got over it. He consistently got over it. When he had those thoughts, when he had those feelings, he, put, he broke through them. He, and, he, and as he consistently did that, he found that lead generation is nothing more than a set of tasks that are well documented. Right? So at that point, it became, he took it out of being an emotional, uh, causing an emotional response within himself or a mental response within himself. He took it out of that 
and placed it into where it just became a practical activity that he did on a on an everyday basis. Lead generation. So you gotta make a mental shift. We talked about mental shifts last week. You gotta mentally shift and move that in a different direction if it's affecting your behavior. Uh, now he says what held him up the most was that he assumed he couldn't lead generate uh, because he thought it cost too much. You know, that's another one of those things that I hear. I was having this conversation this weekend uh, with a broker. Uh, and she was saying that, you know, it takes money to make money. You know, we hear that. It takes money to make money. Well, guess what? Most people getting into real estate don't have money, right? So if it takes money to make money, then we all, right? We all you know, might as well just hang up our, our because we ain't going to win this race if it takes money to make money. So, um, you know, my philosophy is, is that, look, it takes creative ideas. And with the creative ideas, you find the money uh, or it attracts the money. The creative ideas attract the money. And then uh, we'll say the investment, the creative ideas attract the investment. And with the ideas and the investment, then you can make big things happen. So, you know, Gary was like, look, I can't lead generate because it costs money. Um, but as we talk about, too, you know, we talk about prospecting, we talk about marketing, right? And we're going to go into detail about the difference between the two. But look, market prospecting literally doesn't cost money. What it does is it costs time, right? So it's either time or money you're going to spend on lead generating. So it's not about the money. But that's what, what Gary thought. And he says he experienced, um, you know, he assumed it would cost a lot of money, uh, cost too much, and what little he had. However, once he experienced how buyers and sellers find and choose a real estate agent, uh, he then grasped two foundational truths. Right? The first foundational truth is lead generation doesn't have to cost money at all if you don't want it to. That was the first truth that he embraced. And then the second one was, if and when I do spend money, it doesn't have to be as risky as he had imagined. So the first truth is lead generation can cost you zero dollars if you don't want to. And that is true. I can uh, vouch for that as well. 15 years of experience, over a thousand transactions under my belt. I can vouch for that. The second truth is, is that if he chooses to spend money or if you choose to spend money, it doesn't have to be as risky as you may think. It can be extremely calculated. All right. And then the, uh, the last thing that Gary said he had to overcome was that he just plain fought the idea of generating leads. He said that while he was in school, there was a behavioral sales test that he didn't pass. And I didn't know that you could fail behavior tests. Uh, but he said he didn't pass the behavioral test, or maybe maybe he didn't have the uh, the personality type of a salesperson after he took the test. Maybe that was it. I don't know. Uh, but because of it, he didn't feel like a natural lead generator. Now I don't know what that is because look, I'm left brain. I'm an analytic. I'm a, my background is engineering, right? I'm an introvert, so. Everything that I just told you means that I'm not a natural lead generator, right? So there's no such thing, and that's something that Gary realized, that, there's no, that no one is a natural lead generator, right? Lead generation, like he said, is a set of, ta of tasks and activities that are well documented. It's something that can be taught. It's a skill set, something that can be trained, that you just do over and over again. You, you become better at it in time. So that's another one of those myths that people have is that I'm just not good at lead generating. Well, that's just like people saying they're not good at math. Math as well as lead generating is all about practice, right? The more you do it, the more you practice it, the better you get at it. Nobody's just born with a brain that's better at lead generating than somebody else's brain. It's just not how it is. So, it's all about practice. All right, so now there are three steps that Gary goes into when it comes to having an effective lead generation uh, system or process as you're going through a shift, right? Uh, his first step was stop doing what doesn't work, right? And that's extremely important. Uh, again, these are, you know, he's in my wheelhouse because although I've been doing this thing 15 years, trust me, there are plenty of mistakes. Uh, there are plenty of times where Gary is saying, don't do something. And I, and I found myself 
of being guilty of doing exactly what he was saying don't do. And this is one of them. Uh, there were some areas that we were uh, spending money in, um, not measuring the results, and we stayed in those, and we, we you know, we contributed more money in those areas than needed to be done, right? So uh, the first thing that he says when he talks about stop doing what doesn't work is you must realize that time and money are really the two basic tools you have to generate leads. So you must absolutely stop spending any time or money on lead generation activities that aren't working. Well, here's the, bit, here's the kicker, though. How are you going to know if they're working or not if you're not measuring them? So that's another one of those areas that when I'm talking, when I'm working with agents, when I'm coaching agents, is one of those uh, points of resistance is keeping track of your numbers, you know, being conscious of how many phone call, how many leads did this particular activity generate? How many appointments did you, did you get from a particular activity that you were doing, you know, and then correlating that to clients, cl contracts, and the closes, right? But if you're not measuring it, if you're not keep, keeping track, how do you know if you're getting better? How do you know if you're getting worse? How do you know what's working? How do you know what's not working, right? So, but we're going we're gonna to assume that you are keeping track, and we're going to assume that you're measuring it, and you can see if a particular activity is working or not. When he says, well, if it's not working, then you got to get rid of it, especially in a shift. You, you can't be asleep at the wheel, right? If it's not working, you got to stop doing it. He says, the questions that you must answer are, what am I doing or spending money on that is no longer effective since the market has shifted? And again, I talked about this last week. That was a place that I found myself in 2007 when everything went. So for, the, for that two-year period, that was a question that I did not ask myself <laughs> because I didn't even know what a shift was at that time, right? So now, um, he says, now he does give... Uh, he does give a, a process that we're going to go through as, when it comes to how to handle your lead generation uh, stuff. So I wanna, I'm going to show you a slide while I go through this next part. Um, now, Gary talks about lead sources, engaging your lead sources. He talks about that. And one of the things that he says is, is that, you know, how can you know what's working if you're not associating your valid leads and your lead sources with your closed sales? So, you know, a lot of times when I'm talking to, when I'm coaching agents about some, you know, a pro, programs or strategies, marketing or prospecting strategies, lead generation strategies that they want to tap into, it all starts with, where are you getting your leads from, right? You know, I was again, it was a conversation I had this weekend at the vision board party. Uh, she, it was a lender that was there, and she was talking about social media, social media this, social media that, that all these people had told her about social media and that she needs to do more social media, more social media, more social media. And I was like, I mean, why have you bought into the whole social media piece? She was like, well, that's what everybody's telling me to do. I said, well, look. What have you done in the past? What have caused your, where are your closings coming from now? And she's like, oh, well, you know, referrals or this or that. So she started giving me the sources of where her closings are coming from. Well, instead of creating a new channel, a new source that you have clearly, the, and the, I was talking to her, she didn't have any clue about social media. She would have had to learn it. It wasn't something that she was already comfortable with. She wasn't naturally drawn to it. So now you're going to try to force yourself when you have all these other channels which you're naturally drawn to, how about you be intentional about those and enhance those, right? So that's what Gary's talking about here as far as identifying your lead source zones and then maximizing them. So the, what he says is the first thing you need to do is write down your top 10 sources of leads. He says this could be individuals who send you referrals or it could be uh, any methods that, that you can currently use, right? So now, as you can see here uh, on, on the slide, it's a list of lead sources. So the first thing is, so we're looking at number one where it says list, right? So you see we have door knocking, calls to the sphere, agent referrals. Uh, they have 10 connect for sale by owners, open houses, expired listings, sign calls, website registrations, client parties. Now, if you don't take anything else away from this slide, 
The first thing I want you to take away is, is that you cannot survive in real estate by having one lead source, right? He said, write down your top 10, right? So that's even assuming that you have more than 10 lead sources. If you're going to write down your top 10, right? So if you don't take nothing else away from this slide, take away, and I don't know who I'm talking to, but I know I'm talking to somebody. You get out of your head that you think that you're going to be able to have sustainability in this business with only one lead source. Every day you need to be figuring out how to add multiple lead sources. What Gary's going to talk about here is now being able to focus on the priorities. All right, so it says write down your top 10. So we see that here on the slide. Then he said, beside each one, of the, each one, the number of valid leads or closings that lead has brought you. So as you can see on his list, door knocking bought him 10 leads or closings. Um, calls to sphere bought him seven. Agent referrals bought him two. So he wrote down next to it how many leads or closings that were brought. All right. So then he says, um, take the bottom five and stop allocating time or money to them and aim all your resources to the top five that are working, right? So the, the second step on the, as you can see on the slide is he prioritized it, right? So expires got him the more leads, 14. So he put that at the top, then door knocking, then calls to the sphere, then his 19 connect newsletter, then open houses, right? So those were his five. And then when you, when you slide over to number three, focus, he circled, those five and moving forward, especially in a shift, that's where he's going to put all of his energy and his effort. He's going to become completely certain around devoting time and energy specifically to those five, right? And he says, uh, take the bottom five and stop allocating time. We talked about that. And then he says, do this every month because effectiveness is an ongoing and never ending process of evaluation and adjustments. To find the sweet spot, the lead source zone that's working for you. So Gary encourages that every month you do that level of assessment. And again, what does it require? It requires you to measure what you got going on. You're not even going to be able to do this uh, exercise if you don't know how many leads um, a particular activity is generating for you. You're not even going to know. You're not even going to be in a position to be able to prioritize it and do it. So, but it's key, especially when the market begins to turn and things, things uh, begin to get rough. All right. So, the, um, now, I, I thought this was a great concept, and I think I talked about it last week as well, the concept of play red light, green light. Red light means spending no money until what you're doing proves its success. Right. So, now, what that, what that may look like in practical terms is if we go back to the slide and we see, you know, expired listings gave 14 leads, right? Well, say you hadn't did expires yet, right? So you got your five to work and you're devoting time. You want to introduce a new, you want to try something new, right? Say you want to introduce for sale by owners. You never did that, right? Okay. So what that means is, is that, and, and say there's a software or there's a, a program or there's something that you can spend money towards that's maybe going to give you for sale by owner leads or uh, it's going to give you uh, videos, trainings, or or contacts like Red X, give you names of sale by owners, things like that. So say you're going to do that. All right. Well, what you do is you pick a time, you pick a time frame, say, you know, three to six months, whatever your time frame is going to be, and you say, we're not going to spend any new money until we determine if this, you know, software, this, this lead system or whatever that you're investing money in, we're not going to spend no new money anywhere else for marketing or prospecting until we see what this is. That's called red light, right? So you're on red light as far as spending your, any new money until you uh, can evaluate, you go through that 93 to 6 month period to evaluate if this thing works. So that's red light. Now, if you say you go through that 90-day period and you realize it works, you're getting leads, now this thing is in your top five and you're banging it out, all right? Well, now you go to green light. You've, uh, you've analyzed, you see that this works. Now you're on green light as far as spending 
new dollars in some other area. All right? All right, so now, say you go to a three to six month period and you realize this thing is not working. All right, well, guess what? What do you do? You stop paying for it. You cancel the subscription. Don't do it no more, right? And then once you cancel the subscription, you don't do it anymore, then you're on green light. So you're still on green light. And then now you go find something else that may work that you can try out. So that's the concept. That's the idea of um, red light, green light. Now, again, we talked about this last week. We talked about investing, right? So any money that's spent on marketing, you have to see it as an investment. And what that means is, is that for every dollar spent, it should bring you back something. It should bring you back at least what you, uh, 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 you know, half of what you spent. So if, you, if you're spending a dollar, you get back a dollar fifty. That's a 50% return on investment. Spend a dollar, you get back two dollars. That's a hundred percent return on investment, right? Regardless of whatever. But the point is, you need to be coming up. It needs to be coming back. It needs to be a return, right? If you spend a dollar and you're not getting anything back, then you need to stop doing that. I mean, if you spend a if you spend a dollar and it's costing you, that means it's costing you. You need to stop doing it. All right. So now the next uh, step that Gary talks about is figure out what works, right? So that's the next step that he talks about. So step one, we'll stop doing what doesn't work. Step two, figure out what works. He says the proven formula you can use of truly understanding what will work in your market is the two M's of lead generation, message and method, all right? That's another thing that when I'm having conversations with agents that has that is missing when they're trying to determine how they're going to generate business for themselves. They're just haphazardly doing things. They're just doing what they've seen other agents do. And there's no reasoning around what they're creating, right? That's got to stop. And that's what Gary Keller talks about here. The message and method are key when doing any marketing plan or strategy, all right? So now, what he says is, when it comes to messaging, these two questions mean everything when it comes to the message. Why would they want to contact you and what would they get if they did contact you? In anything that you do, when it, and whether that's a mail out, whether that's an email, whether that's a text campaign, whether that's social media, if you're going to put out any kind of marketing or any kind of prospecting, you, as you're creating it, you got to ask yourself, what, why would they want to contact me, right? Now, he says in this market, because we're talking about a shift, but the reality is, in any market, why would they want to contact you, right? What separates you from the other 37,000 realtors out there that's sending out marketing, right? And then what would they get if they did? So it says, the smartest lead generators know that people respond to messages that matter to them now. This becomes the driving theme of all their lead generation activities. What he's saying is, is that successful lead generators go out there and they get an understanding, they have a pulse of what the marketplace is, what the customers want. And then because they get a pulse of what the customers want, then they design and create their marketing message to reflect that. Okay. Now, it says your message must make an offer to get a response. This is another area that I think that agents fall at, is that their message, when they send a message out there, even if they do have a message, the message is not framed in a way to where they get a response, right? It says when you lead generate, you are simply making offers to people with the expectation of a response. So again, whether that's a flyer, a mail out, social media, you're making an offer to somebody and the offer is being made with the expectation that they're going to respond back to you. Now, he talks about two different kind of offers. He talks about a direct offer, which is designed to get an immediate response for someone who wants to buy or sell with you now. That's a direct offer. And an indirect offer is still an offer. Uh, it seeks an immediate response, but it's not a response to where they're going to buy or sell with you now. It's a response to where uh, it puts you in a relationship with them and opens the door to possibly doing business. Uh, he offers a scenario. So his scenario is this. If you're offering a home for sale um, and 
say you put a flyer out there and somebody calls you and they say, hey, you know, hey, I'm interested in buying your house for sale, then that's a direct response from your marketing. Okay? Uh, if you put out something uh, that relates to sellers and they call you about selling their but now I'm going to have to re-record. I have to splice it. All right, so we're back. So we had some internet issues. Over. All right. Um, but yeah, to build a relationship. So the bottom line is that to be an effective lead generator, you need to make offers that motivated buyers or sellers will respond to right away. Now, you're looking for opportunities to convert people to immediate business, and you're looking for opportunities to get into the dialogue with people for future business. So again, that's direct, indirect. You're constantly, whenever you're putting your marketing out there, you're constantly looking for both. You're looking for people that you can convert to do business now, and you're also looking for people that you can put in some kind of pipeline to where you're doing future business, doing business in the future. All right? So, uh, the, the, and the message is what drives that. Now, you know, once you come up with a solid message in whatever approach that you take, you... Um, you, will, you must pick your method for getting them out. Now, this is where we bring in the conversation when it comes to uh, lead generation falling into two uh, areas, prospecting and marketing. Now, I've had plenty of conversations with agents who don't really know the difference. They feel like it's the same. A lot of them you know, feel like the same. I'll ask them a simple question. You know, what's the difference between prospecting and marketing? And, you know, they give me a, 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 a laundry list of responses, but rarely are they the right response. So the way that Gary describes it, uh, and again, it's one of those things that I 100% agree with, is prospecting is where you go to get leads. Marketing is where you do things to cause the leads to come to you. It says prospecting is you making contact with people and marketing is people making contact with you. Prospecting is seeking, marketing is attracting. And that's the one that if I can if you can if I couldn't say it any simpler, is right there. Prospecting is seeking. You're going out there and you're seeking clients. Marketing is you're attracting. You're you have things out there that are attracting leads your way. All right. So now this is one of the figures that's in the book. And he gives you a list so you can have, again, some, some actual practical examples of what will be considered prospecting and what will be considered marketing. Uh, and it looks like when it comes to prospecting, he broke it down in two areas, telemarketing, that's making phone calls, and, and he gave you a list of the people that you could call and reach out to, um, and then face-to-face. -face. And then with marketing, you got advertising, promotional items, internet websites, direct mail, Broadcast signs, news. So as you can see, with most agents, they move towards marketing. That's why people feel like you know it makes it takes money to make money. Uh, that's because they they're heavy on the marketing side of things. They're heavy on the the attracting versus the seeking. All right. So the um. Uh, but again, as we talked about earlier, prospecting is not going to cost you anything but time. Um, so he says, don't limit yourself to one method. We talked about that earlier, right? Ten lead generation sources. Uh, the method that you execute first should be the one that generates the most leads in the shortest amount of time for the least amount of your effort and money invested. You want to go into this thing being, again, being calculated, right? You want to be extremely calculated on how you approach it. Now, initially focus on getting quick leads, then more leads, then lots of leads. So the, things that, the thing that you pick from this list, prospecting or marketing, what you want to focus on is, um, is getting leads quick. You know, how can you quickly get, especially if you're new in this business, you absolutely want to focus on what are the activities that I could be doing now that's going to give me the quickest way to get leads. Then as you identify those, then you want to ramp it up, right? You want to get more, uh, and then you want to have the thing explode, right? So you want to be intentional about it. Now, since prospecting, we talked about that, can literally cost no money. You should go straight to prospecting. So everybody, if you're brand new, you should always, if you don't have no money, you should always go to prospecting first and begin seeking new leads. Uh, it says prospecting, 
Uh, here's another difference between prospecting and marketing when it comes to the message. Prospecting is about converting your message to effective verbal dialogues and scripts that you must practice and learn. So it's about the scripts, the dialogues, the practice. All of that is about pro falls in line with prospecting when it comes to generating leads. And then marketing is about converting your messages effectively to the print or broadcast media that you choose. Right. So again, seeking versus attracting. Now, there are limits to your reach with prospecting uh, that don't exist with marketing. Reason being is because if you're seeking something, then that means you always have to show up to do it. Well, with marketing, you know, you just put it out there and it sends the people to you. People reach out to you. So uh, there are no limits when it comes to it. Now, prospecting tends to uncover motivated leads faster and it keeps you more in control. So that's another reason why you should start with prospecting over marketing. Not only does it not cost you anything, uh, it also tends to uncover motivated leads faster. Now, most real estate agents have two behavioral styles. One is to either take action first or to study first. Um, I go back and forth between sometimes in some moments. I'm just like, man, let's just get to moving. Um, and then sometimes I'm uh, paralysis by analysis. Um, but first you need to figure out which one are you. Are you the one that don't really do much study? Uh, you just try it. Start, you, know, you start writing the check. Start doing it. Start doing the activity. Are you the one that's got to look over it over and over again? You got to maul through that thing. You got to study that thing uh, before you start moving. Which one are you? All right. Uh, regardless of your style, um, the one you should be is or, or what you should be, how you should be operating is, yes, you should take some time to study before you act, but you should do it quickly. Quickly study, learn the basics, and then take action. And then as you're taking action, continue to study, right? So study never stops, but you don't want it to impede you from moving forward. So that's why you quickly learn the basics, and then you get to moving. And then, and then you continue a habit of study as you're still moving in that vein. So now if you are an action first person, just some advice that Gary wants to give you, slow down long enough to study and practice 30 minutes, at least 30 minutes before you take off in whatever direction you're going to go. So do that. And if you are a study first person, realize that you can't know it all no matter how much you study. Right. That's a, again, that's psychology, that 80 percent. You got to realize that no matter how much time you put into that book, you're not ever you're not going to get all of it. So you got to start moving. All right. And then finally, when you take action, really go after it. Don't just do a little and from um, get the best returns uh, from any lead by uh, by by going all out for it. And uh, this was another this is another one of those um, figures that's in the book, uh, which I thought was a good one to look at. He talked about open houses and going beyond the basics. And then he just broke the open houses down into levels, right? Um, so level one, was, level one was just a sign in the yard. But look how when you get all the way down to level seven. So he, he called this level seven open house marketing. I, I want to say we spoke about this before where most agents, they'll spend an hour marketing the open house and then they'll spend four hours sitting in it. Well, what you should do is you should flip that thing, right? You should spend four hours marketing it to where you'll have more than enough leads uh, to where you can, you know, close shut that thing down within the hour. So level one, sign in the yard. Level seven, sign in the yard, sign in the yard with balloons and riders. Directional signs at all key corners with balloons and riders. To sum it up, successfully generating leads in any market is about understanding how to create effective offer response messaging, right? You create the message, you put it out there, whether it's through prospecting or marketing, you put it out there with the intention that you're going to get a response, okay? 
Um, so that's number one. Then once you do that, once you understand how to create the effective offer response messages, then you must implement effective lead generation methods to put your message in the path of your target audience. And your target audience is what? Motivated buyers and sellers. And once you come up with the message, then you have to be effective in how you put it in front of your target audience. And then once you do that, here comes the measuring. You have to weigh the responses and make necessary adjustments on an ongoing basis to improve results. That's your tracking. That's your measuring. So you have to do that to make sure that what you're doing is working or is not working. So you can stop doing it and you don't waste too much time and money or, or energy with it. All right. So I'm, I'm going to do the last thing. I'm going to close out tactic four uh, and then we'll just have to start tactic five uh, next week. All right. So the, uh, the last step has to do with ramp it up. So what Gary says is, is that the third step, the first one is stop doing what's not working. The second thing is to find out what is working. And the third thing is to ramp it up. So once you find out what's working, then you ramp it up. But he says, in order for you to truly be successful lead generator, you must do a lot of lead generation, which is one of the biggest messages that I had a hard time getting agents to grasp. In order for you to be a truly, you, you got to do a lot of lead generation. You can't do it one day here and one day there. You can't do it an hour here and an hour there. You can't be inconsistent with your lead generation. It has to be consistent if you're going to be successful. It says an inconsistent consistent approach can get you leads and that's where my agents get tripped up because it's not like being inconsistent is not getting you nothing it can get you some leads but it won't give you anywhere near the number of leads you'll need when the market shifts really and to be honest with you even in a good market it won't give you anywhere near the amount of leads that you probably want or you envision yourself um, as far as the amount of finance, money that you make in this business, right? See, a lot of times it's not you're not doing the right things. You're just not doing enough of it. Um, so it, it does. It's a volume business. We say that, but I believe few people really understand what that means. Now, you're going to need a lot of leads, and that means you're going to have to do a lot of lead generating. You must do it every day. You must do it several hours every day. You must do it every work day for the rest of your career. You must ramp it up and keep it up. Lead generation. If this is what your career path is going to be, if you're going to do it full time, if this is what's going to take care of not only you, it's going to take care of your family and future generations, you have to follow this advice that he's given when it comes to lead generation. Now he says, you must subscribe to this belief. Dealing with business never takes precedence over finding business. You must adopt the position that until your lead generation is And when we fall for that, that puts you that puts your business in a cycle that you don't want to be in. So you got to subscribe to that. All right. Although a tough position to adopt, um, because the rea the reality is that if you don't adopt that position, then you will look at me. You will constantly find other things that seem more important, or allow other things to convince you that they're more important then your lead generation. You will do that. If you don't adopt the philosophy, again, psychology, we're going with psychology. If you don't adopt that ph philosophy, then you will find other things that seem more important. Now, until your number one priority is done, everything else is a distraction. So if lead generate, we're saying lead generation is your number one priority. Well, if, uh, if that's not done, and again, that's why we start with philosophy. You have to see it at, the, at that. You have to adopt that. But if, if, you, if you have, then if that hasn't been done, and that's the number one priority, then everything else is a distraction. Everything. Not some things. Everything. 
Now, the number one challenge you face will be consistently doing lead generation over time. It's the number one stumbling block that knocks most real estate agents out the game. Again, 15 years in this business, and I can absolutely co-sign with Gary on that one. It is the number one challenge you face, and it is the thing that knocks them out of the business. All right. Uh, now, to ensure your lead generation is always your number one priority and that it gets done daily, you must acquire the discipline of time blocking. Okay, time blocking is important. Time blocking is something that I uh, coach, I really emphasize, and a lot of it does have to do with this whole lead generation piece. Because if you don't time block it, then you're, that is why most agents don't consistently lead generate. Now it says, research says that you will need at least three hours a day of lead generation time and that you must do three things during it to be effective. You'll do during your lead generation time block. The three things each day are prepare, take action, and maintain. So when asking the question of, all right, so I made the decision, I'm going to do these three hours of lead generation. Well, what do I do during that time? All right. So let me show you real quick. So guys, give me about five more minutes and then we'll be done. It may not even five more minutes. Give me three minutes. We'll be done. All right. So first you must prepare. And what pre preparation looks like is assembling your call list, you know, uh, if you're talking about prospecting, so assembling the call list, rehearsing your scripts, preparing handouts for visits, preparing for open houses, uh, assembling mailing lists if you're talking about marketing, um, you know, prep work on mailers, ads, work on the website, work on social media, secure posters, take photos, like that, that's your preparation. Right. But the thing about preparation during your lead generation time, you don't want to give, you know, 30 minutes to an hour max. Like you don't want to give no more than an hour to your preparation time because the heart of lead generation is taking action. Right. And you, you know, at the least you want to do at least a minimum of two hours for executing your plan of lead generation. So when it comes to prospecting, they may be mailing out invitations to events, making calls door knocking, networking, customer parties, hosting open houses, follow-up calls, at least a minimum of two hours of that is what you want to be doing and you're doing your lead generation time block. When you're talking about marketing, that's mail merge and mail, delivering mail and ad copy, writing notes as a, a warm touch in your marketing plan, thank you, thank you cards, birthday, thinking of you cards, hey, on social media, that's not on here. But the you know direct messaging people or responding to direct messaging from uh, marketing that you put out there, or ads that you put out there, engaging your social media. So all of that is taking action, and like I said, that's the heart of it. All right. And then the final part is maintain. So you know when when you're talking about maintaining, and it's the same for prospecting and marketing. Maintain maintenance part of it is you're entering results into your database. You know, you're writing follow-up notes, you're recording your work, you're tracking, check results, schedule a calendar, fulfill promises. So all of that is in maintenance. And although maintenance is important because all three areas are important, Pre preparation, taking action, and ma maintenance are all important parts of, say, a three-hour lead generation time block, preparation and take action are more important than maintenance, all right? So they're more important. Um, but the stuff still needs to be done. You got to update your notes in your database so when you're uh, following up, you'll know, you know from what direction that you need to uh, approach them. And um, you need to be able to track results. And it's important that you do that. And it's important that your lead generation is consistent um, because this, this final figure kind of says it all. Most agents live up here. This is kind of the cycle of their business. Right. This axis um, is leads and this axis is closed sales. And as you can see, as you go through it, as it shows you the inconsistent lead generation, then you don't do any lead generation. So you don't have any closings. Then you start doing some lead generation then you start having some closings. Then you stop doing it, lead generation then you don't have any closing, then you start doing lead generation, then you start having some closing, right? Uh-oh. See the picture? That's what inconsistent lead generation causes. 
it causes inconsistent money, right? So your, you know, when you when you're when you're doing lead generation, I guess the bottom is you're doing lead generation. Then you have closings. When you stop doing lead generation, you don't have any closings. Well, this is where you want to get to, and this is where consistent lead generation takes you. When you're consistent on how you generate leads, then notice how your closed sales, i.e. making money, not only is it consistent, it increases, and it increases exponentially because through your consistent lead generation activities, it begins to build upon itself. Well, that's the dynamic that you have to get to. And that's where, when we talk about the realtor success funnel, when we talk about sustainability in this business, that's what it looks like from a graphical standpoint. And that's how lead generation um, applies to it. All right? So we're going to stop there. That takes us all the way through tactic four. And we're going to pick up and talk about next week. We're going to try to get through tactic five and tactic six next week uh, to finish up when it comes to this portion of it. So next week, um, we're going to be talking about conversion, right? Lead conversion. We're going to be talking about how to catch people that have real estate needs over the World Wide Web as well uh, while going through a shift in real estate market. So we're going to try to get both of those uh, in on next week. Um, and then, uh, and then we'll, we'll wrap up tactic five and six if we're able to do that. So with that being said, uh, does anybody have any questions, any comments, um, any, uh, any suggestions? Let me see, Let's see everybody. All right. I know we had some uh, technical difficulties with the internet, but what we'll do is we'll get, I recorded both sessions. So just on this go around, I'm gonna need you to merge them together uh, and then put them on YouTube for us. All right, and then we'll go from there. So it is going to be on YouTube too. All right, so with that being said, we are going to shut it down for this week. Uh, let me get my music going so we can and close this thing out. No, because we got another one under our belt. Create your new life. Brooks and Davis company meeting. Uh, and coaching session. Um, we had a great time continuing to go through our book, Shift, right? Uh, we talked about lead generation and how important it is, and especially in a shifting market and tough times, why you need to be doing it. Um, we looked at a great property for sale in Fresno, Texas. Uh, our agent, Jeff Lewis, has for sale. We're going to help him move that property. Um, the serum is back. Yay, Serum Success in Real Estate Machine, the number one Brooks and Davis tool that we offer for the success of our agents. That is back. We're happy to see it back. Um, with that being said, man, y'all enjoy y'all weekend. Again, Michael G. Davis, CEO, broker, Brooks and Davis Real Estate, signing off, coaching you into the cosmos. Let's take off, baby. Talk to you later. Bye.